Uh, welcome to part two in this uh, um, overview demo of this uh, Maxidas um, DS708 uh, diagnostic tool. I'm going to go straight in now to my OBD first to have a look and see what we have. Switch on my ignition. Um, don't know if it's out of shot or not, but there is a light uh, just below this area here that will uh, show you're connected to the car, it flashes on and off. It's connected to the car now at the moment. Click on OK. And we'll just go through some of the functions uh, of this the OBD section of the, the scan tool. We can read our codes, pending codes or stored codes, but I have no codes in memory so it's not going to do anything. Likewise you can erase your codes, but I have no codes in there to erase. Uh, we'll come back here to live data, freeze frame. Um, as I have no codes or pending codes in here, I'm going to have no freeze frame data either. Freeze frame data is used to have an idea of when the uh, trouble code was generated, whether it was a high RPM, low RPM, uh, what was your throttle angle, uh, engine speed, or uh, sorry, I should say vehicle speed. A lot of these. Um, Pids are stored here in your freeze frame. Down. You have uh, vehicle info, component test. This, these are not uh, do not apply to these, this vehicle here. Um, Go into component test. Onboard monitor test. Uh, we can select it. Uh, this is where you'll get your, I think it's mode 6 to call it. Hmm. Not an area I am too familiar with. I'm going to have to do a little bit more reading on this area. So I can't tell you much how to use that. Uh, modules present, uh, DTC lookup, um, we just punch in a code P0420, press return, and sorry, escape, P0420. It's not coming up at the moment. Um, P four And uh, the last one should have come up with the uh, uh, maybe I put the wrong code, but P O uh, three four oh. That's the do with your can position sensor uh, bank one. Uh, that can come up on these nissans when your timing chain is stretched. Let's try P0420. Yes, there we are. I don't know. Okay, cancel that. And let's just go back into the light that. Start the car. do a complete list shows you all your uh, data pits at once and uh, currently warming up as I see I got a we're in closed loop as you see here and I am having a Total 
total of 11-12% uh, fuel trims um, on the minus. Now, uh, my I, uh, intake air temperature is reading 24 degrees. And it's only about 12, 13 degrees. Do a custom list. You can select whatever you want for your test. Engine RPM coming down as the engine warms up. Absolute drop position 1.6%. Uh, that might rise. Uh, let's rise the RPM. You had a uh, if you had a dirty throttle body, that might be a lot higher than that. Let's just go now straight into the factory uh, tool, the uh, Nissan factory tool. You can go into uh, diagnose by system, diagnose by vehicle. If you do by vehicle, you punch in the, the uh, manufacturer, model, year, and a few parameters like that. Let's just go in by system because I know what I have. Now it gives you these sub menus here. We have auto scan and the control unit. But before we go into them, let's just have a look here what's in the Nissan anti theft system here. Read codes, the race codes, your standard, uh, then you got your pin read. Uh, I know this vehicle doesn't support this. This must be something to do with setting up. Uh, your NAT system probably with a new ECU. I'm not a hundred percent sure. Maybe some Nissan uh, technician would be able to uh, say more about this. Um, I'm not going to mess around with this at the moment until I know more, get more information. Okay, escape. Uh, let's. I can do an auto scan now or a control unit. Uh, if I do an auto scan, it'll scan. For looking for every module that's present in your car and it will display them and uh, show you any fault codes then uh, beside it. Well, I'm going to just go into control unit because I know uh, the devices I have on this. I'll leave the engine to last. We'll just go to APS. Connect into the module now. Get your ECU part number, read codes, erase codes, live data, active test, um, live data. just go to live data, have a quick look, and uh, we'll do the main signals, have a look. Okay, 
and here's your uh, wheel speed sensors here uh, the four top uh, options here and um, you can graph them you could say put four graphs and uh, you could drive down the road and you could save this by um, and you give it a the VIN number I'm just going to put anything at all in and now uh, as you can see here it's saving this and you can do your drive down the road um, and when you get back into the workshops you can have a look at these graphs and if you had a faulty speed sensor on your wheel you might see a bit of drop out on one of those graphs I'm just going to pause it and it's file save it's already saved the file for you I'm going to escape out of that now. Obviously we have this uh, custom list where you can just select. Four data pits to limit your data pits. With your graph mode. And likewise you can do the save again. You can change it to two graph. You just wanted to look at uh, the front uh, two wheel speed sensors uh, just do one graph escape over that and now we have down here we have uh, an active test here this is uh, where uh, it's above your average uh, scan tool um, yeah. It's uh, bi as bi-directional control. I'll just go in here. Uh, front right-hand solenoid. Um, you'll hear it press up, and you'll see that change it as well. So it might be if you're having problems with your, your uh, ABS. Uh, uh, I've had never worked on an ABS system to know how to use this on it. Uh, you got then your ABS motor down here. You can click your motor on or off here uh, as well and you'll hear it running. But I'm not going to do that because uh, I've never uh, worked on an ABS system. Here's the ABS. Uh, let's go down here to airbag. There's nothing much uh, on this Nissan in the airbag. Uh, but I have uh, connected this up to other cars and there is quite a lot of information um, on it. Um, if I go into live data for instance on uh, I think it was uh, an Opel uh, I can't remember the actual model but it actually showed um, the resistance of the uh, lines going to your airbags uh, handy if you're having a uh, an airbag light coming on uh, as we all know uh, the connection underneath the seat uh, for some of the uh, side impact airbags uh, you also got the uh, airbag uh, on the steering wheel. You got the slip ring. There's nothing much in here. We can do read codes, erase codes, re read pass codes. Uh, I'm just going in here to have a look. Pass, no faults detected. So uh, I don't know what this is for. It's just give me a ECU number. Here and I'm going to go straight down here to Smart Entrance. I'm going to scan this with the um, MD802, it actually shows me. Uh, an error code for my smart entrance 
but with this um, DS708 uh, it doesn't show me uh, why I don't know. We've got a lot of stuff going on here in the uh, smart entrance. I'm just going to go in here and look at the live data first. Uh, just we'll do all signals, have a look. I'm going to do a bit of lock in here. Uh, we got the driver's door. I'm just going to open it. As you see, the change is torn. And um, we can actually share, uh, ch change the position of these as well. Bring them down. Get up. Okay, and let me go for another one here. Uh, bring that to the top. And we can actually let me lock them, send the lock. And let's see. Send it on bring it up the top as well. And uh, we can check the function of the buttons on your door, as you can see. Uh, lock, unlock, change to on, take my finger off it. Now I'm going to lock, change to on down here. Work support, uh, auto relock, not too sure what this does. Uh, go and have a look in and change auto relock setting. I'm not going to until I get the service manual out and have a look. Uh, and likewise, I'm not going to do anything unless I know what I'm doing. Rear defogger. Uh, if we switch the, uh, press the button on the dashboard for switching on and off the, uh, you can see it responding to the presses. Now this is not telling you that the rear def uh, defogger is on, it's just telling you that the computer has recognised you have pressed the button. You can tell anywhere when it, go it goes on because you can hear the engine uh, speeding up and slowing down as the load goes on the alternator. Room lamp. Uh, let me just go to the custom list. Just door switch, we'll just select that. Door switch on. Close the door, door switch off. There's a lot uh, of things you can do with this. Uh, your indicators, you check your indicators. Uh, uh, the switch is on your uh, column. Um, which is handy if you what's in here audible trailer warning I don't know what this is for um, I'm not going to go to this ok I'm going to turn left left turn switch on, you know to make a contact inside the steering column. Right turn on. So you wouldn't need, uh, if you have having indicator problems, uh, you wouldn't even have to uh, start switch uh, checking the uh, the uh, cables going back to the uh, uh, CPU or the power control module, body control module. Keyless entry. I won't go into everything. I'm going to go back now into 
did you dash on out? ECU part number, read codes, erase codes, the usual standard, and then we got live data. And uh, I'll just do all the signals first. Have a look. You can do custom list as well if you want to select what you uh, want to look at. Battery voltage, thirteen point nine two. Coolant temperature now uh, 86 degrees. Um, your MAF voltage uh, 1.06. Engine speed. Uh, just got to grab it. Okay. TPS sensors. Let's escape out that. We'll do a custom list. Uh, we'll just do a check on the TPS. And I'll put this in the graph. And I'm going to do um, just the two graphs. Uh, sorry, two graphs. Right, we're in two graph mode, and I want TPS one and TPS two. TPS one and TPS two. Now, for this, now I'm going to have to switch off the engine. Now you do this with key on, engine off, and. Uh, I'm going to put my foot on the accelerator now, and as you see, there is no change. Right. What you have to do with Nissan is put in the gear. Any gear will do. And as you see now, the uh, voltage changes straight away. Now I can put my foot on the accelerator uh, pedal, and you see that voltage changing. And what you're looking for is dropouts on the dash. Waveform. A better way of doing it would be to connect an oscilloscope to the two TPS uh, connectors on your throttle body. Um, it's quicker, it would find the smallest of glitch. But uh, you would have to put the car in gear with the ignition on to do that. And in my last video I showed uh, this test on the MD802 uh, and I had my foot on the brake. Um, when you have your foot on the brake, it reduces this voltage here to 1.65 to 1.68. My foot is on the brake now, I'm going to take it off, and you see instantly it goes up to uh, over 4 volts off. Now, foot brake on, foot brake off. I would imagine that's a safety uh, feature with, with Nissan. Escape. You also have these active tests. I'm just going to switch on the uh, engine, start it up, and we'll go through these uh, tests we have here. Fuel injection. And we can change the uh, pulse width of the fuel injectors. Um, to um, simulate a lean condition or, or a rich condition. I would imagine this would be handy if you had um, an O2 sensor that was either fixed lean or fixed uh, rich, either fixed high or fixed low. Right. I know this says it's, uh, 
it's fixed low but it is changed it's just not catching it when it goes up and I am at a low RPM as well uh, I'm going to just speed it up to about around uh, 2000 RPM now I'm going to decrease my and you can hear the engine going down and as you see here my voltage now on the um, um, upstream sensor has reduced down to zero I'm just going to go back up and you can hear the engine it starts rising now I'm making it rich it's plus 25 percent there that's the maximum it'll give you and my voltage on my O2 is at 0.9 of a volt which is a uh, fixed rich uh, you, it doesn't matter now you can the minute you do this escape it resets it uh, back to normal ignition timing you can change your ignition timing in here as well if you want to check that power balance it could be called a cylinder drop test I think and um, this would be used if you uh, were uh, miss one cylinder misfired uh, uh, permanently and you wanted to check which one it was and uh, you would like uh, in the old days you used to take a lead off the uh, uh, spark plug to see which um, uh, cylinder didn't change the RPM level so I'm going to just select cylinder one Press OK. Takes a couple of seconds, and straight away the engine starts getting up. The RPM dies. Now it tries to get back up again. And the minute you do that, then it's OK. You can do that for all the cylinders. You can select two, three cylinders if you want, but the engine will conk out. Escape. Cooling fan. you can switch on your coolant fan switch it off if you want to test the uh, circuit and um, if your coolant fan wasn't coming on and you want to check uh, the coolant fan circuit and uh, whether the relay was good the fuse was good and um, the actual fan motor was good if you press this to on you know all that circuit is good so you're going to have to start going back to sensors and see why it's not coming on um, speeds up your, your, your fault diagnosis very quick uh, off. here's your coolant temperature um, I can ch artificially change the uh, coolant te um, temperature and you will see the injector pulse widening and uh, the RPM will go up i just do a go quick up Sorry, I'll go down. Bring down the temperature. Quick down. You can see my RPM now is at what? 1600 RPM. Pulse width is at 2.2 uh, milliseconds. And uh, quick up. sure but I can hear my fan cutting in now as well when it went over to 100 degrees I know it uh, the fan cuts in at 100 degrees and then shuts off at 95 degrees fuel pump relay um, I would imagine this would be very good for checking the your fuel pump current uh, if you had a no start and um, um, you um, as we all know if, uh, it needs an RPM signal to keep this fuel relay on uh, if you were doing a fuel pressure test and um, current tests on your fuel pump you would just switch this to on but I'm not going to do this now because the engine is actually running if I switch it off now the engine is going to crank out um, purge uh, volume control uh, I'm going to switch this on. 10%. I'm going to put 
on to 100% very quickly. We're at 100% now and we're running lean. Um, I have seen it though, uh, when you uh, open that 100% it runs rich for a while and then goes back to lean. Put escape out of that. Here we have a variable valve timing and we can change the angle of that. I'm just going to go up. Sorry, sorry, go this way. see the angle changing. Our duty cycle there is 40%. Where our angle now is at 89%. Um, Just give it a little bit of a rev. Keep it there at uh, the RPM about 1500. And you can see it's changing. We're now at uh, 11, 12 degrees. Go back down. just escape out of that. Now down here we have our work support and um, you can release your fuel pressure with this. I'm not going to do this with the engine running uh, and what you would do is if you were working on the uh, fuel rails and injectors you would uh, start the car up, uh, start this and what will happen is the engine will crank out and there will be no fuel pressure in the uh, fuel rails. So you could safely uh, disconnect the fuel rails without any fuels uh, spraying out. You can change your uh, ignition timing, but uh, it does tell you no, this function is not normally required during the unusual service procedure. You can change your, your idle, and that's the same thing. This will be where most um, people would need here is when they're after cleaning the throttle body and you want to relearn the throttle uh, uh, position. And here you've got two settings here, you can automatically do it or manually do it. If you go the manual route you have to be pressing the, uh, the keys, uh, switching the keys on and off X amount of times and uh, for a set period. So we just go in here to automatic. Sure. 96. Um, I think I'm outside the parameters for setting this up, but I'm going to just press start so you can see what happens. Idle speed is changing. I can hear it, go, um, it just went low, it's come back up again. Hi. It's telling me incomplete, uh, why I don't know. Uh, I'm going to have to investigate that further as well. But my idle speed is uh, it's okay, I'm not having a problem with it. Uh, Self-learning control. Um, you can clear your values. Um, uh, your self-learning values in here, uh, prob it's probably your uh, long, long and short term fuel trims and uh, the likes here. Let's, let's just do it. Um, air fuel ratio learn uh, bank one. Um, I'm not going to do that, but you, you could press clear and it would clear it so you'd it have to relearn it. Okay, incidentally I didn't point this out, um, the quick way back to your uh, your screen is press that one button there and it comes straight back to there and you can select your OPD2 if you want. Um, I hope that's of use to someone out there um, thinking of purchasing one of these um, devices. Um, the only thing I can add to it is make sure you buy it from a 
local source if you're in the US, buy it from a US supplier. If you're in Europe, buy it from a, uh, an EU supplier. And uh, there is a lot of uh, websites out there that give you the impression that they're um, resident in the UK or the US. But when you buy it, it actually comes from Hong Kong, China and you will be left with the import duties to pay the driver as well. Okay, thanks for watching.